What's up guys, it's JK and I'm here with the 6th episode of the Atletico Madrid career mode in FIFA 16 so far. If you enjoy this career mode, drop a like and subscribe for more content in my channel and... So starting off this episode, we got a transfer offer for Luciano Vieto and this offer from Sevilla made me kind of a thinking. We get... The, the initial offer was around like 30 million euros but I want to get a bit more out of them maybe... Uh, so I delegated this one. For somewhere around like 32 around to 40 i will be really happy with that and the fact that we got Griezmann, Diego Costa, Fernando Torres and Angle Correa who do I really prefer. There's no like a room for Luciana Veta so far he has played only one appearances so that's why I kind of delegated it and I'll really be happy selling him for a good amount so. Moving into this episode guys this episode is the most fun episode I had while playing and while editing this video as well so the first game against Barcelona not kind of a really fun but uh, as this episode goes on I guarantee you it will be definitely fun especially the last game man it was the best game I played on FIFA 18 you know so this game against Barcelona a pretty tough opponent and due to a recent form we won four games we have four games on our unbeaten streak in the La Liga we won four straight games so we are on a good form and facing a, a very tough opponent in Barcelona so as a uh, uh, I did have my first team, entire first team up there, they were fully fit and there was really like all guns blazing in this game. The only thing is that we are in the second in the league table and Barcelona were like 5th or 6th but they played one less game and they are 2 points big at it. So if we lose this game, they get a, like a head start ahead of us and it would be pretty hard to, for us to catch uh, Barcelona, you know. They had a slow start like us but they are picking up their ranking and stuff so... Looking at the lineup, I was so surprised to see Paco Alcazar instead of Luis Suarez. I was really happy with that. And later I did find out Luis Suarez had a suspension or something. So it was kind of a good one, especially at this early stage. But Barcelona were not stopped by the absence of Luis Suarez. Like Barcelona's gameplay, like the AI uh, controlling Barcelona were really good, man. Like passing were crisp and short and the, uh, the wing play. Like Messi on the right hand side and Del Feu with a lot of pace on the left hand side. Like they were really unstoppable. I had a really hard time defending uh, against Barcelona. You know, the the tempo was good. They play with a high tempo and they exchange passes quick between here and there. And once they get into your box, like uh, the midfielders come into play, like Busquets, Rakitic, Iniesta, who came on in the second half. Like there's there was no stopping. Like uh, Barcelona, I was much superior. I just realized like they were a much better team than uh, uh, we are. So uh, uh, like congrats to them, kudos to them. But in short, to be fair, I was really struggling against Barcelona. Uh, so my main target too was to win uh, against Barcelona. But uh, when I did get into the game and realized how far good the Barcelona was. I just wanted a draw, uh, I did not want to lose there, but we did com uh, concede a goal to Paco Alcazar, the second choice striker for Barcelona, by a bad mistake from Diego Godin, like uh, I was controlling him, so half of the mistake was on me, like I did not know what I was trying to do, like uh, having the pa ball around him, like uh, I wanted to pass it to Jimenez, uh, I just did not, uh, like it was great pressure from uh, Paco Alcazar, so we got to give credit to him too. Like uh, like a bad, bad error at the crucial time from Godin. Like if you remember in the last episode, he gave a penalty, but thankfully uh, to Oblak, we uh, saved the penalty. But uh, this time, there's no stopping Barcelona from scoring. So they did get ahead and once they did get ahead, it was really hard, guys. Uh, it was really hard to find any space in their box. Like uh, their midfield and defense is so organized. And I only had like two or three uh, attempts at target, you know, like Griezmann did not have... Uh, more than two shots on target but uh, this is like a fantastic run from Antoine Griezmann like he has pace past uh, Mascherano and their uh, defense but for some reason Diego Costa missed an absolute tap like I was so frustrated I almost threw my controller man like how come an 86 rated striker miss an opportunity like that so it was a rare opportunity that also we got in the late in the second half so that was a depressing end to this game like like we lose 1-0 and uh, to uh like a defensive mix up like a mistake from our, our part so I was really frustrated like we move into this next game against Chelsea in the Champions League like we have got once again a very good run going on in the Champions League two game and we, we won two game comfortly 
but uh, like uh, like the Barcelona, I was really figuring, uh, fearing that uh, Chelsea might end up doing the same against me. So it was a kind of thought process. I did not go with 100% like fully fit mentality to go into this game. And I did fear for Chelsea as well because uh, Chelsea were much similar to Barcelona. Like they got some really good wide uh, midfielders like Eden Hazard. Like Eden Hazard, speaking of him, he was like a pain in the ass throughout the entire game. And Willian on the right hand side and Morata is like quick and strong. So I was really in, not in a great mindset going to this game. And But this game was much better than the one against Barcelona because I was getting a lot of uh, chances too. And Chelsea were getting a lot of chances. For some reason, they were really attacking the wing play. Like Chelsea uh, do not commit like a lot of players into your uh, opposition box because they have like five, uh, five at the back formation. So I did not see any of the five defenders in my box. It was like Eden Hazard, Villian on the right hand side and Morata drifting here and there. So these were the players that were giving me like hard time. And there are only two midfielders in Chelsea to deal with compared to like three from Barcelona. So this was a much better game and the second half the game did open up. Like Chelsea wanted to like uh, go for the win. And I bought on two important changes. I bought on Fernando Torres and Gabi to have like a bit more solidity into my midfield and attack law. And we did, get, we did get a lot of opportunity and Fernando Torres really feels like much better player to link up compared to Diego Costa. Although Costa feels like a much better player to like uh, with his finishing and strength he has got much better stats than Torres. But Torres feels like he's always there, his, uh, his positioning is fantastic like he links up the play and as you can see they had a wonderful shot on target, not on target but uh, had a lovely shot which did hit the bar and go out. So the subs were clearly working, Gabi was a, like a very good addition when you bring on him as a sub and they did pay way for us to get a goal now. Um, uh, if you uh, did look back at the link up play, it was passed from Gabi uh, to uh, Torres and Torres to Thomas and uh, like, like a team goal, a lot of plays involved and uh, Diego Costa did fire it in with his left foot, weak left foot from uh, like outside the box and it was a very good finish and against his former team who did not want to play him in real life for some reason. So it was a very good goal and once again Gabby linking up with Fernando Torres and that, that touch from Torres. I, I bet Diego Costa would not have had that touch because uh, he's not good on the ball. Like He's really hard to link up compared to Fernando Torres. For some reason David Luiz only got an yellow card. I thought that was a straight red but uh, that was the end of the game. I just could not like score another goal. It was really late into the second half so... We did held a defense strongly this time without any mistakes and if you notice that Thomas got a man of the match and he got the man of the match in the last Champions League game as well. So Thomas really looks like a good defensive midfielder but I do suggest that we need a first team, first choice that a defensive minded midfielder in our team because Saul and Koke are like a box to box type of player. So I will be looking to invest in a defensive midfielder come January if we have the enough sufficient funds. So. Moving into the final game of this episode guys, this is the best game I played in FIFA 18 career mode. So, it's an away game against Celta Vigo, not the greatest team, they are kind of like a mid-table average team. And we did get off to a flying start in the 10th minute. Uh, lovely work from uh, uh, Griezmann and Koke, their link up play is so good, like Koke did well superbly in this game. I, I did not notice Koke uh, in the previous games, he was kind of, I did not notice uh, his attacking like kind of work rates and stuff. But this game, he was always available to have the pass. He was always making runs in the opposition box. And as I say that, we do score another goal. Uh, once again, an assist to Griezmann. This time, Diego Costa did roll it past across the goalkeeper. So, so you might already guess the theme of this game. Like, I was scoring goals for fun. And it was really early in the half too. Like, that pass from uh, for Griezmann from Gaitan was fantastic. And Griezmann... I kind of wanted to pass at first but he agrees to open up his body fantastically and curls it past the goalkeeper to make it 3-0. So we aren't finished in the first half guys. Late in the injury time in the first half we do get another goal back. So the, the first attempt from the corner did not work out but the ball uh, lands to Diego Costa's feet and he dinked it one perfectly for Sal. Uh, Sal is more of a box to box midfielder you know. Not the kind of uh, brutal center defensive minded one. And he scores a beautiful volley. It wasn't more of an easy tap in, you know. So it was really fun to get four goals in the first half. And the trend did continue in the second half. Costa making a very good run. The pass, uh, the, uh, the run made by Costa and the effort on target were really superb, man. This is why I like Diego Costa. He makes good runs uh, in between defenders. And that was one, one of his better goals. So that was the fifth goal of this game. 
And we do get a sixth goal thanks to Antoine Griezmann who was there at the right place at the right time. It was the fault of the keeper. He, for some reason, he kind of spilled the ball and Griezmann uh, was there at the right place at the right time as he is always. And he scores to get his second goal of the game. And both Costa and Griezmann were on a hat trick, but I just could not find another attack to get their hat tricks of this season. But unfortunately, we do concede a goal. And for some reason, this opponent, like, they were not at all like going for the ball and stuff they and uh, but they managed to get a goal uh, like and it was well taken goal from Cron Delhi I think so so that's going to be the end of this episode guys we finished the episode with a banger 6-1 scoreline fantastic performance by the team and I'm really happy with that so that's going to be the end of this episode guys I'll meet you in the next one soon